So, recently on my Discord server, somebody asked if this podcast was being sponsored or funded. Unfortunately, it's not. We're not getting paid for this. There's no money going in at the moment. In fact, no one in our guest today is getting paid for this. What do you mean we're not getting paid? What? I thought we were getting paid. Excuse me, you never discussed this. Anywho, speaking of sponsorship, this podcast is brought to you by water. Water, better stay hydrated. Go get that water. (laughs) Gotta stay hydrated. H2O all the way. Insert cricket noise here. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Casual Nerds Podcast with Eri and Matt. Hello, welcome to Casual Nerds, a podcast for casual fans. My name is Eri, and with me is... DJ Matt. (sighs) Oh, Matt, are you okay? Are you sick today? Yes, yes I am. I am so sorry for dragging you to come record on... on I told you this before we started recording. I am so sorry. It's fine. I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to be... I like doing the podcast regardless. Hope you get better soon. So welcome to the final episode of Casual Nerds, the final episode for season one. And for today's episode, we have a couple of guests who will be joining us today. So... Let's introduce some of them, shall we? Yes, yes. Let's introduce. So our first guest is someone who has been in our podcast previously, and let's reintroduce her. Welcome back, Britt. Hi. How is it like to be back? I am here and mostly alive. And you also sound sick. I am also sick. Yeah. Hashtag sick squad. Yay. All my friends got sick this week, and I was the only one who didn't get sick. So I've got, like, a superpower. You are immortal. I know. And if you heard that extra voice, that's because we have another guest today, and her name is Acacia. Hello, Acacia. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks. So, Acacia, you want to introduce yourself to the audience? Who are you? What do you want the world to know? Um, I just woke up, so I'm probably not going to be speaking much, because when I wake up, I'm half dead. I have a YouTube channel. You should go subscribe. It's a big deal, 40 subscribers. And I don't know what else to say about myself. You like long walks on the beach. Um, I don't like long walks on the beach. (laughs) I did a long walk on the beach once and it started getting really hard because the sand just like pushes your legs in a weird way and it just, it's horrible. And lastly, we have a final guest here today and his name is Jackie. Hey, how you doing? So most people know me as Jackie Jess. Um, I'm part of the Club Penguin Rewritten community. I'm a YouTuber. I make YouTube videos and um, on updates, parties, walkthroughs, cheats, catalogs, stuff like that. And uh, yeah. So here's a, here's a fun fact for you guys to find to know about. All of the people here are some of my online friends. Like everyone here, I'm like my closest friends in different fandoms. And, and that's what today's episode is going to be about. The connections we make online, like online friends, the community members that we interact with. Just that in general, because there are some misconceptions when it comes to online communities and online friendships that I think now is the perfect time to explain what it is and probably some pros and cons about it. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So for starters, before we go into the nitty gritty, let's tell everyone or try to list up the different types of online connections that we could possibly make. So we all know there's online friendships, we all know there are fandoms, but what else? What else do we know? What other online connections can we think of? You mutuals on Twitter? It's just like people who follow you and you follow them back and you like you can share them with other people. I was at a con and I was talking and we were just like to a, another Twitter friend and it was just like, how many mutuals do we have? And we were seeing like who people we follow and all the people that we like also know as well as each other. And we connected all the, over all the people that we know together. Honestly, uh, the way I connect with people online is through discord, Facebook for the most part. I used to go on Omegle at one time. Omegle. Oh my God. That site is so ancient. Wasn't that like old school Tinder? Pretty much. It still is. It's literally just horny guys. Sometimes you'll come across like, a decent person. All right. Yeah. There are lots of guys there looking for a short romantic affair. Encounter. Yeah. 
But yeah, there's like a lot of lonely guys on there. And there was one time I decided to troll a bunch of them. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Basically, I wore this really creepy owl mask I have. And I just kind of sat in a dark room just staring at the screen. Oh, I did that for a bit. And a, like a lot of people just like just stared at me. And some actually got a little freaked out and just like clicked next. I remember there was a Omega hunt that Ryan Heger did. And so I had a horse head and I just like put that on and like said nothing. But people were like, it's the horse. He's back. And I'm like, ah, jokes on you. I'm a whammon. <laughs> I am a female woman. Um, compared to a lot of my friends at school, I just use, you know, Discord, Twitter, YouTube. But um, connecting with others around the world, it's uh, it's good because I think it really um, forms relationships. It's good to do that, especially if you don't have anyone else to talk to. But, um, but yeah. Okay, that's an interesting start. So... What is the difference between connecting with people online to compare to what it's like offline? I know it's obvious, but I know there's like a huge list of differences and similarities. So what, what do you think could be the, the comparison between the two forms of connections? I believe it's easier to find people online because like if you want to connect with someone like I'm just going to say this out in the wild, like it would be a lot easier to find them if they had like... Uh, a shirt or something from a community yeah. here and like I met someone on the train with a Doctor Who backpack and we just started talking about panning at the disco but it is so much easier to just like you have Dan Howell in your icon you must like Dan Howell we are going to talk about Dan Howell well actually um, my school we recently did a debating unit where we talked about different topics and for our mini group we got uh, social media is anti-social and so we um, we were the affirmative team, and we um, discussed how discussing um, on just in connecting with people online. Yeah, it can be good. It's just um, you know it's dangerous because people aren't sharing their true feelings, or people aren't being honest with you. They could be they could be dangerous people. So social media. And like connecting people online is a good way to form relationships and build um, friendships, you know. Um, but it can be dangerous. That's the only that's the only con I can really think of when it comes to um, connecting people online. Yeah, I also agree. There might be some dangers when it comes to talking to people online. As there might be some shady people out there. There might be some. They might have some dark secret that they don't want to tell you. And then there might be some arguments, like you might have some opposing views, and it could cause arguments, and so on and so forth. And But this, at the same time, I, I can also see the convenience, as in, it's easier to be friends with someone because it's like, you're talking to people with like similar interests and whatnot. But I'm also aware of the term called the filter bubble, where you're just going to be placed in this little bubble filled with the same people with the same views and everything. And here's, this is something from experience. If you show one view that is opposing to the majority, you may get kicked out of that filter bubble due to the majority mindset of people of within that group or that community or whatsoever. So yeah, there's some pros and cons to all of this. But let's focus more on the pros first before we get to the dark side of things, shall we? Yeah. How long have we got here? <laughs> I'm, according to Logic Pro, we've been here for 19 minutes. No, but like, how long do we have? Because there are so many pros and so many cons. <laughs> so let's talk about meeting people in real life. Like, I know I met Brit and Acacia in real life already. And for some of you guys, we have plans to meet up if we could afford it or if we have the time. But let's talk about the idea of being able to meet someone in the real world. Like you know them so much online that the moment that you decide to let's meet in like your local park or something, share us your thoughts about it. Because when that first happened to me back in 2016, 2017, I guess, it was like a really, really, really really scary yet exciting moment because it's like oh my goodness i know this person for quite some time and we're meeting but i don't know if it's gonna be like what we've expected could it be different i don't know anything can happen 
But in the end, we both had a blast and we both had fun and it was really cool to see each other in real life. So what are your thoughts about meeting people in real life? And don't just be like, oh, it's a good thing. We also need to cover some dark sides to this as well as there are some dangers to meeting people in the real world when you first befriend them online. I think it depends on your closeness to the person. Like sometimes um, people will, you'll meet and then it's just like, okay, we've met. And then they don't really talk a lot anymore after that. And I've had that happen with a couple of friendships and then like, it's not great, but at least you got to like hang out with them and meet them and you still got to, you know, be with them for that time. But other people, it's like, I had someone I know describe it best where you meet them and everything in the world just disappears except for you and them. And it is a special thing that like, you're never going to meet them for the first time again, but you're going to be able to meet them maybe later. And there are some friendships that go for years and years and years without them meeting. And finally, when they meet, it's like this huge moment of like relief. Yeah. Well, I was, I'm thinking the same thing. It's, it's definitely going to be a special moment because you, you and I were thinking of meeting at uh, VidCon Australia next year, which is an awesome idea. And we're going to do a little collab. And it's going to be nerve-wracking, but also exciting at the same time, just because, you know, I trust you and all. Um, but meeting in real life will be, I think it will be different, but exciting, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'd never meet someone if they say let's go to a park to meet up I would meet someone if we were going to a shopping center or somewhere that's really crowded because I would never meet someone where there's not a lot of people because that's really sus but did we meet for the first time during a fandom meetup which was on a park that's different that was in a really busy park in a like in the middle of a city true true I guess it's the safety thing like you want to be safe so it's best to meet someone where there's like a lot of witnesses or in the case of strict Asian parents have your dad come with you to meet your friend in person just to make sure that they're not really sus in that that type of way well I can honestly say I've never met any of my friends uh, that I've known online in real life Uh, the closest I guess you could say I've ever gotten was getting a few gifts from them in the mail. Um, Like, I know from Aerie, I got a Lazy Town CD once, which is still in my collection. I'm not getting rid of that anytime soon. Um, I've also gotten um, a collection, uh, a giant freaking collection of manga from another friend of mine. And um, that's about it. Uh, As for meeting in real life, I honestly don't know how that would be, but I... I would actually be excited if I met any of my online friends in real life because I think it would just be kind of a cool thing to experience. Um, And yeah, I I just think it'd be cool. Uh, But if you ever plan to do that, just be careful because uh, you never know what they could be like off screen. Definitely, like, be careful if you're meeting up with someone if you've never seen their face before because, like, one, you don't know what you're looking for. And two, like, what if you have just some 40-year-old man approach you and be like, oh my god, I know you from Twitter, and it's like, (laughs) gotta go, bye-bye. Unfortunately, Jackie's having some connection issues, so we're trying to resolve that. Press F to pay respects. Uh -uh, I need water, sorry. This is sponsored by water. Okay, bye now. Stay hydrated. So another topic that I want to put under the spotlight is the idea of drama, online drama. Whether it's big or small, there's going to be drama everywhere. Within friendship groups, online communities, whatsoever. And it's a bad, bad thing because once it happens, at least from my experience, it's really hard to recover from it. But what are your experiences when it comes to online drama? I think drama is... um, It depends on the people like you're with. I know that some people cause drama because they're a bit immature and they you know they talk to their online friends the same way they talk to their um their IRL friends and so some people you know take things a little differently and it and it can be difficult to really understand a person's character and I think that's why drama gets started uh when it comes to online drama I just uh At one time, I kind of dealt with it, and also it kind of depends on what it is about, but for the most part, I just really ignore it, especially 
Um, some people will still try to drag me into their drama, whether it be I like, you know, in real life friends or online friends. And I just really stay out of it. I don't like drama in the slightest. So it's just something I just, I personally just say, if it's nothing important, it doesn't, you know, has nothing to do with you. Stay out of it. I really don't have the time for drama, and I used to be involved in some drama, but honestly, I'm just too old for it, and I don't care. So if you want to try and start drama with me, I am not going to budge, because I don't care. Sadly, I've been caught into too much drama, and all the things that they all have in common is mostly because we all just have different views on something, and like I mentioned earlier, there is this hive mind mentality that comes along or that comes around when it comes to online drama. Like, people must have the same ideas, the same beliefs, ideologies, and everything in order to quote-unquote fit in. And the, the moment you start showing up opposing views, you might be lucky if people are, like, okay with it, but there are, like, some people who might not be and would probably, like, kick you out or just start a fight or... Something even worse? I don't know. All I know is that it's bad. So, Jackie's back, finally, and he's gonna talk to us via mobile. Hello, Jackie. Welcome back. Hello. Thanks for welcoming me. Welcome back to the podcast. So, Jackie, what are your views about online drama? Online drama, yeah, it's kind of... It's not even that um, important. It's just what do people decide to join in. When there was drama in the Club Pang Rewritten community, believe it or not, there is a lot of drama in that community. You might think it's all, you know, um, fun and games, but really there is a there are a ton of people who, you know, aren't the best. But um, I decided to stay under the radar. So for drama, I suggest or I, you know, try to just try to not um, join in. I would um I wouldn't post any tweets about it. I wouldn't um talk to anyone about it. I would try and be an observer of the drama. So I wouldn't um pitch in. Some people did and they paid for it because they got um you know, they they got what, what's a good word to describe kicked it? Out? Yeah, they got kicked out. They, you know, people started offending them or the bad people started offending them. So the best thing you can do, especially with drama in a, um, a social community is to just not, just not, to not, um, join in. Sadly, I got involved into way too much drama. And one of the common reasons why I got involved or I ended up being caught in the crossfires, mostly because of opposing views, like, we all have different views, and I respect that people have different views on certain things. The issue is that, like I mentioned earlier, there's this thing called the filter bubble, where if you will more, you will fit in better if you all have the same beliefs, ideology, points of view, and whatsoever. And the moment you start showing a slight difference to what the majority views is, or what or whatever the majority views as acceptable, there is a slightly high chance that you might get attacked for it. You will be lucky if there are people who are willing to be accepting to whatever your views add, but unfortunately in the internet, people just want to have a safe space, so hence the creation of the filter. And it's a sad, sad thing. I could go more in depth on this, but it's really hard to explain it in full context because it's it's really, really complicated. A lot of this is complicated and it's sad because the internet is like a way for us to connect yet there are people out there trying to divide us and so forth. Yeah, I agree. I think people have just got to learn to even though we believe in different things, even though we have different perspectives um, people have just um, got to learn to respect other people's beliefs and thoughts on certain subjects so that means not offending them that means like encouraging them maybe maybe just having a discussion like we're having today maybe just having a discussion with them about the topic you don't have to just you know uh be so mean to them about it you don't have to say you're the old one out you're different it's okay to be different i think that's a very valid point that you know it's not 
fair to kind of all attack this one person. I feel like everybody should be able to speak up and be able to have their own voice. And I think a healthy discussion about it or maybe if you can't in the moment because there's too much heat, maybe like a few weeks or months down the line, then maybe everyone can kind of just, you know, chill and grow and learn that, you know, some things they said wasn't right, some things, you know, yeah, I know we've had issues in the past, but I, I've i grown now and I think it's important to be able to have a sophisticated conversation with the person who is trying to create all this drama or is, you know, involved in this drama rather than just fighting with fire. That's a very good point, exactly. That Yeah, I like that. Um, basically, you know, like she was saying, try to have a conversation with this person. Don't try to offend them. Um, you know, just do what you can to make it peaceful. If there's drama, try to talk it out. Try to work things out. But if you can't and they refuse to, you know, like no matter what you do, no matter what you say, they're going to keep either bringing it up even after the situation is over. And I don't mean just kind of like cat every once in a while or every once in a blue moon. What I mean is, I mean like almost every single day. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Just constantly. And it's just like, you know, if they're just going to keep at it and keep going at it, just distance yourself from that person. Maybe after a while, when you distance yourself from the person, depending what the situation is, you probably can work things out. But if they just continue to keep doing what they're doing, I say just, you know, let them go completely. Sometimes it's hard, and I know that. But, you know, sometimes it has to be done. And if you have to distance yourself from a toxic situation, then do it. It's better on yourself. It's better on your health and all the other good, you know, all the other stuff. So yeah, just do that. The thing about like toxicity and friendships is you don't really know how toxic it is until you leave. And that's kind of the risk you have to take, but it's very much risk reward. Like if you know you're in a, in a bad situation and you know that like something doesn't feel right, get out of there. And then once you are out, and once you've kind of calmed down and things have gone right, you think you either discovered that, wow, that person was really hurt and they were just trying to take their anger out or that person is really toxic and I'm glad I'm away from that environment because that was just going to be detrimental to my own health. Sometimes the best thing to do in that sort of situation is to just you know, leave the group, block them because they could keep attacking you. I've actually had that multiple times. Ari and I... Uh, we both know a couple of people in the Club Penguin Rewritten community that have attacked and raided servers and and done that. That's why I got Ari's help in my server to help, you know, moderate and stuff. Um, yeah, so the best thing you can do sometimes is just to block them and ignore them because you don't want to feed the flame. You don't want to um, talk back because they'll just keep talking back to you. They'll keep bugging you. But if you just ignore them, block them, and stay away from them, they'll eventually move on and learn to just um, ignore you. Here's a fun little question, and this is all based on experience. Let's not go into too much specifics, though, because we don't want to cause problems. What exactly. If, <laughs> what if you are the cause of the drama? What if whatever, whatever that caused this huge mess was partially or entirely or majority or you got involved in it it was most you got you are part of the problem how would you deal with it i think um acknowledging that you have done that is really a um you know is really a mature thing to do if you acknowledge you're like hey i understand that i did this wrong taking some time kind of away from the the situation is a good way to just say okay i know i did this wrong and I know we've done some things to each other that may have been wrong. But in the end, I am here now to apologize and to be mature about the situation. And if you don't want to be, that's okay. But I'm going to sit here and and be the big person. No, yeah, you should definitely acknowledge, apologize and make sure like everyone's all right. I think not to think of yourself, not to put you in the center or in the spotlight and say, I'm so sorry for this. I'm the, I reckon. Yeah, uh, no. But 
Laura Lee. Yeah, try and think of the other people. Try and really connect with the other people in that uh, in the drama. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, just if you, yeah, if you are the cause of it, apologize. Think of others and try and just fix it up. Because the longer you um, the longer you uh, wait to do that. Uh, the harder it is for them to forgive you for what you've done or for them to trust you again. And it also could be like um, the way you handle yourself in the situation in the apology. Like if you say, I'm sorry, um, I was, you know, I, I did this and, but also you did this, you did this, you did this. I think it's a very, a very, um, very selfish thing to do to just say like, yeah. Hey, I didn't do anything wrong. I was the, I was the good person here and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very good point. Um, basically, you know, when stuff like that happens, as people have said already, uh, own up to it, you know, apologize for it, see what can be done, see what, see what you can fix between you and the person or multiple people. If there are multiple people that you have wronged, um, just do what you can to fix it, and if you can't, uh, it's not an easy thing, but sometimes you might just have to move on from it, or move on, and if people do not want to, you know, associate with you anymore, yeah, that's not really a good thing, but that's part of life, to be honest, and things happen, so... Honestly, that's kind of one of the hard lessons of life. If you screwed up that much and people don't want to associate with you, that's kind of a wake-up call not to do something like that again. So, you know, it's just... You, you just got to learn from it. If if things don't go yeah. the way you plan, just you got to really learn from it. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, from these experiences, the best thing... Um, that can come out of it is learning from your mistakes. Everyone doesn't, we sometimes learn from other people's mistakes, but most of the time you're learning from your own mistakes. So if you're the cause of some drama um, and you know you've done things wrong, you've apologized, you've not only um, apologized and tried to fix it, but you've also learned from it. And that's what I think um, really helps us grow as human beings. Yeah, I remember there was this huge drama that I got involved in in the past that was so bad that we're actually planning to have like third party people involved, but we all know that it's not that worth it. It's the internet. It's kids arguing with other kids. So we all decided to just talk it out as professionally as we can. We tried to learn from each other's mistake. We tried to figure out what went wrong and we tried to find some common ground to not make it worse. So most of the time, it's the usual, you don't bother me and we won't bother you. And usually stuff like that, it takes a while to get used to because people still want to attack, make fun and stuff. But in the end, you will get there and you will just end up being okay with each other. You don't talk anymore, unlike before, but you're now up to the point where it's, eh, it's okay. It's fine now. It's all over. As long as we don't bring it up, as long as... No one attacks. It's all good. And it takes a long time to reach that point. But patience is everything. Social media or connecting with people online should be about making friendships and stuff. And when drama does occur, it's going to have to occur sometimes. But it's just um, it just depends on how people approach it and how people deal with it. So if people deal with it badly... Sometimes it can get really bad, but if people just um, let it let it happen for a bit, um, talk with those you know, talk with those who um, have caused the drama or are part of the drama. I think after that's happened, um, I think I think it will all work out. So as long as it's worked out, you should be fine. Let's talk about secrets and alter egos. Because it's the internet. We all hide something. We all have something to hide. And for certain groups of people, there are some things that you don't show. For example, Jackie here is in the Club Penguin community. He's just a recent friend. We just recently become became friends. And there are some things that Jackie doesn't know about me that Acacia and Brett 
may know and probably Matt as well. There might be stuff that Matt only knows that my that Acacia, Jackie, and Britt doesn't know, and it goes all over the place. So, what do you think of the ideas of having secrets towards each of your friends? In re- let's not say like secrets as in oh I have a secret crush on someone. No, we're talking about like personality secrets or views like a secret opinion that you don't want to share to the other person because i don't know you're afraid that they might hate you for it so what do you guys think about having secrets i think that everyone you know has things they don't tell their online friends it's like some of my online friends don't need to know exactly what i'm doing 24 7 and they probably don't want to know because it's not pg but there are some things that like i would tell my online friends it's like i'll tell my online friends it's like man i'm having some health issues or something like that. But there are some things that they don't really need to know. And it depends on the friend, really, because there are some friends that I would tell about things that aren't necessarily PG. And they're just like, hell yeah, sure, cool, why not? Like, we we just have chats about that because it's fun. But, like, not everyone needs to know. Yeah, um, secrets, yeah, sometimes... You don't, yeah, of course, you don't want to actually share most of your, you know, secrets or whatever with other people, especially online. It's bad to, it's bad to do that. Let's just make sure we don't share any secrets on this podcast. So, you know, um, but anyways, it's actually, I, I feel like it's, it's good to talk with people about, um, your perspectives on some things and beliefs, you know, it could be religious, it could be, um, mental issues. It could, it could be personal issues and, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's good to talk with other people because sometimes it's, it's, it's like letting the weight off your shoulders. You know how, you know how when you write in your journal or I, who has a journal here? I don't have a journal. I used to have one. I used to, then I stopped. If I ever stopped yeah. writing in a journal, it's a cry for help. I have a bullet journal that I write in, like, sometimes but i don't go like dear diary today i yeah. had a fat cry i just write like <laughs> i would write in my diary while in the middle of having a fat cry <laughs> oh man those are the days when i was like 12 years old and i'm like this was the worst day ever i'm sad <laughs> i have a i literally have a diary that i literally torn out almost a majority of the pages because at least a majority of them is me writing me just me writing a bunch of angry stuff like i was mad all the time so and then suddenly i was reading it back and i'm like okay we're tearing all these pages apart now we're gonna burn them burn them in the fires but it, but it's sometimes good to write down your personal feelings onto a journal because yeah it's like you're almost self-reflecting because you're not necessarily telling anyone um once you write it down it, it's there it's it's there. it's not just like a thought in your head it's on a piece of paper you can you can look at constantly so I, I, I feel like writing things down, especially in a journal, does help. I don't have a journal anymore. I used to. Um, but especially when you're feeling down, um, it can always help to talk with other people, to write things down, to just try and manage it with care. But what about having like a secret interest? Like there's an interest that you have. For example... I like writing fan fictions. I'm pretty sure like a lot of people know about this, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time Jackie knows that I write a specific kind of fan fiction genre that we will not get into. I, I can speak okay. for everyone but Jackie in this call and say we are very familiar that you like oh, to write fan yeah. fiction. <laughs> oh, hell yes. <laughs> A little yeah, too familiar uh, that you enjoy writing fan fiction, but anyway. Who's a fairy here? No. Not, uh, no. no oh, yes. Someone, my cat's. <laughs> <laughs> but we're I mean, about- there's nothing wrong with fairies. They're, they're all cool, but yeah, I'm not one. <laughs> yeah, we're, dude, you're a penguin. Aren't you technically a furry? That's a flippy. <laughs> a finny. <laughs> No, they have feathers, so it's like a feathery. Wait, what? Penguins are no, feathers? No, they have flippers, so it's a flippy. Yeah, it's a flippy. Just get, get your facts right. For God's sake. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Siri, do penguins have feathers? Not on cop Welcome penguins. Welcome to the next guest, Siri. Here's what I found on the web for do penguins have feathers. <laughs> they have flight feathers. 
according to Siri. Now, can you look up if they have focus? Hello, yeah. everyone. Welcome to the Casual Nerds podcast. And our next guest is Siri. Siri herself. We have the voice of Siri. Yeah, welcome to the podcast, Siri. Siri, do penguins have flippers? Here's what I found on the web for do penguins have flippers? Yes, they have Man. flippers. Why would you Siri ask Jesus. that? <laughs> um... Very few birds have true flippers, but all penguin species do. Okay. Yeah. That's right. So that's flippy. Flippy gang. We are currently experiencing a technical fault. Please hold on while we try to rectify the problem. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. But you know what I used to lie about? What do you used to lie about? I was saying that, like, back when I didn't have any friends, I wouldn't tell any of my online friends because I just didn't want to talk about it. Because when I talked to them, it was like a sort of escape from life and I didn't want to think about the things that were depressing me. And I just wanted to, like, talk about happy things. Yeah, that, that, that's good. That's okay. It, it's totally fine to go on social media, interact with people online. Um, because, yeah, it is, it is good to escape the world sometimes. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, so it, it's it's okay. I mean, I never but lied yeah, to him. I just didn't bring it up. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sometimes, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. As long as it's not like lying, saying like, "Oh yeah, I." Oh, I'm, I'm the, the most I popular kid example. in school. Yeah, <laughs> I go to school. As long as you don't lie, I would reckon if you just keep it a secret, as long like just don't bring it up or anything like that, it should be all good. And that's. Totally fine. I know you guys are like pointing up like mental health stuff, like try to not be open about personal things and everything. But what I was hopefully referring to more is the idea of having like secret interests, like like mentioned earlier, the oh, fan fiction yeah, yeah. writing or being a secret. No, nah, I'm always really honest. Yeah, there's probably a lot of things we all hide without even noticing it because we just don't like to bring it up during like um. Um, talks like this with the whole like secret interest thing I do like kind of understand like because there are some things that I'm interested that I don't really tell a lot of people um and when I do it's like they also have that interest so it's okay and we like openly talk about it but I don't think a lot of people like need to know about it I mean if I want to tell someone I tell someone and if I don't I don't for the record I will say I'm not a furry it's not bad it's just like something I keep to myself a lot of the time and it's kind of my business. So if someone asks about it and I don't want them knowing, it's just like, it's really just my business and I don't see the reason to get into like to butt into it. I still did think that we have some things to hide unless you really trust someone to know about it. Like now I trust Jackie that I used to write Fan fiction, but I'm not gonna tell him what kind. No, God, no, God, please, God, no. <laughs> but we all we all have our secrets, and sometimes it's a good thing that we keep them from others because you know you don't want to share too much of yourself just in case something bad happens. But there are times where you have to share it with someone because it's it's gonna make things easier for them to understand when problem arises. Like I remember I told Matt a huge secret of mine, which I will not say. And he managed to make me feel comfortable about it. Like, he helped put me at ease about it because I never tell anyone about it. Like, I don't want to tell anyone about it. And I decided to tell Matt for some reason. Maybe because he's an adult and I trust him in an adult way. You're a professional adult, Matt. How do you feel? Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that makes me feel amazing. Would it be easier to tell someone a secret just whatever um in real life or on social media which one do you think it's easier social media real life what? social media Ooh. is way easier and social media everything is published and it's hard to get deleted i had experience sharing my secrets in real life and i had experience sharing my secrets online and both of them are good but the, like i said earlier there are problems in the online world there will be drama and then there will be a day where you guys won't get along and it and for and then for eventually that person who you trusted that secret with will spill the beans for some reason i don't know in the real world if you told someone a secret there is a high chance that they will probably forget about it or won't bring it up because they know it's not their 
you know, it's not their problem. It's not their business and everything. You And the fact that you told someone in real life about it shows you trust them a lot. Online is fine. I see the trust thing, but it's still the internet. You could still be talking to a psychopathic 40-year-old. I think it's important, like, who you tell your things to. Like, I remember, um, and I'm comfortable with this now, I remember when I was telling people I was bisexual, and it was a huge thing for me, and it was very secretive, and, you know, I... Um, I messaged my very close group of friends in real life and then my very close group of online friends at the time. And I was like, hey, this is what's going on. You know, I don't want you to look at me any differently. I don't want anything to be different. I just want us to be us. And I want our friendship to be the same as it always has been. And it was easier to be out online than when I was in real life. Like I never came out in real life until um, this year. And I came out to myself in 2015 so it took a whole three years just to be Mm. out and comfortable in the real world instead of just like online and to my friends and on twitter and things like that yeah so online is definitely easier i would i would say i mean airy yeah you've got a couple good points about real life but i i think online a lot of things can be shared around like much easier but i I guess it's easier 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 to tell people um, directly online um, because uh, it's easy to put it into words. Sometimes when you talk, you stumble and you will you don't really know what to say. But when you like write down a paragraph and you know you can edit it and stuff like that, I feel like I feel like that's better. I understand what you mean. Like I get it. If you message someone, you can perfectly craft the message and say exactly what you want to say. But when you're in person and you're yeah. talking. You can fumble yeah, yeah. your words and you can say the wrong thing and it can just get yeah. messy. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. So here's the big question. Here is the big question. Are, are online friends real? And what I mean about that, I mean, is this. Because there are like parents out there or grownups who still believe in the idea that online friends are not real friends because the backstabbing, the negativity and... Basically, you're just talking to someone on the screen. You could be talking to, I don't know, a 40-year-old psychopath. But do you guys think that online friends are real friends? Yes, because you're still making a connection to still someone you talk to. Them. I also, yeah, I think that, um, you know, parents and other people think that, or like, the generations that didn't have social media or interactions with, like, people around the world through, you know, devices and stuff, they think, I think they see. Uh, I think they they see all the negative aspects of it first. The negative aspects um, of social media and like real friends online stands out way more than the positive side of it. Do you guys agree? Yeah, like it took a while for my parents to accept that I have online friends who I'd love to meet in real life or who I'm meeting again in real life, and. There are times where they still believe that it's not real and everything. Online friends can be real if you talk to them long enough, if you get to know them long enough. Um, They can be a real thing, but at the same time, you have to be careful, just like with anything, of who you're becoming friends with. Especially if you plan to meet them in real life. Because... You know, that could be actually a dangerous thing. Who they are online could be completely different. Who they are offline, as some have said. And honestly, I mean, there's there's a few friends I wouldn't mind meeting, you know, in real life that I know online. Um, but yeah, honestly, I just, I would like to meet some people that I know online in real life, but because of the distance, that will probably never happen. Online friends, really, for me, have done a lot more good than bad. Like, I I consider my best friend, my, um, like, my top, like, best friend, she's an online friend, and I've never met her in person. We've known each other for nearly five years, and we, um... We plan to meet in March. I have to fly over to Missouri to go meet her. Her name's Josie. But um, we we share everything. You know, we are, we're very comfortable and 
I know I've had a few friends like her, but none of that have really stuck by me. And like, regardless of like how long I, you know, get to spend on a call with her or how much I can, you know, talk to her, the distance really sucks. And, you know, I wish I could see her more often, but you know, I'm, I'm glad she's in my life and she's a really important part of my life. And now my friend, my family have considered her one of their own and it's it's really important to have a very good close friend like that and they may be the like oceans apart but online friends do really make a difference and you know Josie and I have impacted each other's lives she has a tattoo of my handwriting on her wrist and I plan to get something similar of her handwriting and it's just it's so crazy how the smallest things can bring people together that's really beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm also chatting well, to her now on Facebook and she says hi. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Jackie left because he has important business to attend to. So we say farewell to him. In reality, he probably just needed to go to the bathroom. No, I'm joking. I still would like to believe that online friends are real. At the same time, I also have to be cautious because you know who knows who you're talking to. But in the end, it's a beautiful thing when done right and correct and safe. It's It's just going to be a wonderful and amazing experience. So, story time. Guys, let's do a little story time. Share us a story of your best online friend slash online community experience. I think my favorite um, online friend experience would probably just be Josie and our connection that we have. I love how we're able to talk about anything and everything, and I... I was like feeling sick one day and I was like, I'm going to have a bath because I'm sad. And then she called me and I was like, dude, I'm in the bath. And she's like, it's fine. We've had worse. And, um, it's just, it's just a really funny friendship that we have. And it's so unique. And I love being able to say my best friend lives in America and I've never seen her in person. And I, you know, I love being able to call her my friend because I'm very lucky to have her in my life. And I think, um, and I'm I'm grateful for her family who have offered to take me in if I go over and, you know, meet her and all this wonderful things. And it's it's something really special. And, you know, we've we've been able to buy each other gifts and we uh, have a very similar birthday. She's a year and one day older than me. So we're the same age for a whole day of the year. And then she turns a year older. So we always celebrate our birthday together and one day um, we plan to be in the same place and have a joint birthday party because we'll pretty much be the same. Some of my best moments actually include uh, talking with Ari here because uh, she can be quite entertaining to talk to. Uh, very interesting. Um, and uh, another person who uh, I'll just go by her nickname uh, this other person I know, her name is Patchy. Um, I met her through the Lazy Town community, and we've actually become pretty good friends. And uh, heck, like I was saying earlier, how I got that giant box of manga, that's who I got it from. And um, which I'm, I'm still grateful for, which uh, a lot of it's a lot of rare stuff. Uh, and it's not like the books, it's those old school, like when they used to come as like single comics. You know, like how uh, America has like those single comic issues, like issue one, issue two. That's what these came in, and I'm grateful for them. There was this guy who messaged one of my internet friends asking her to do this weird survey thing, and she showed it to a group chat. And so I messaged the guy, and I was like, "What the hell are you talking about?" We got into this weird conversation, and he was saying all this weird stuff, like, "Yeah, I'm an alien," or some I don't know weird stuff like that. And after I was done talking to him, I was like, "Okay, bye." And then he said, "All right, nice chat. Talk to you tomorrow." And I was like, "What the hell?" And didn't want to talk to him tomorrow and for the next week he started talking to me and I didn't want to talk to him but after a week I was like hey this guy's pretty cool and now he's my best online friend and he's not an alien maybe they are an alien and you just don't know it you know what he's that weird it wouldn't surprise me I have so many stories I want to share like I have a lot like I remember meeting Brit for the first time I remember meeting Acacia for the first time talking to Jackie for the first time being able to gain his trust and everything 
But I think the memory that stands out the most is when I met my first online friend, Madison, for the very first time when I traveled to Adelaide back in 2016, 2017. It was really, really amazing. We were talking about how we would meet, would be like Dan and Phil, would be so magical. And we ended up vlogging both of our meetups. We vlogged us coming out of the door and everything. And we just hanged around. We got to know each other's parents and everything. And from then on, we just ended up being really close friends. Sadly, I was unable to meet her this year due to uh, other important commitments. But I really do want to see her again at some point in the future. And I think that's the, the really cool thing about online friendships because for so long, it's just like you and this person. But then like your families get involved and like my my family's no Josie. And so I'll be like on the phone and talking to Josie. And I'm like, mom, I'm talking to Josie. And she's like, hi, Josie, how are you? And like her, like we've added each other's moms on Facebook. And on my birthday, uh, Josie's mom said happy birthday to my Australian daughter. So that was really funny. But it's it's a really cool, like, unique experience having an online friend. And it's so, like, and it's so unique to this generation because, like, people have had pen pals and, you know, people have had that sort of thing. But this is, it's so different, but I love it. You know, I love being able to have these really cool stories about, like, how I met some of my friends. Like, Erin and I are online friends, but we met in real life before we became, like, online friends. And... Um, cause I knew that she was like on Twitter and she was a like notable figure in the Australian Dan and Phil community, but I like, I'd never spoke to her. And so I talked to her at the meetup we met at because I was, you know, I just finished uh, year 12 and we were talking about, you know, uni and the HSC and things like that. And it was really interesting because I've had a few friends I've made in real life first before becoming online friends and it's so funny how like the the um it, it can like swap from uh, you know having all this time online and then meeting them in person just like meeting them in person then having all this time online I can't believe you just said I'm a notable person I'm not that notable I'm not a stag I'm not a Priscilla well you were in the Australian Den and Phil community I saw you everywhere it's a funny story because I was like, I want to do a fandom meetup. I want to meet the Australian fandom because we're all literally separated. We don't know each other. And I was like, okay, fam, who wants to meet up in Hyde Park on this certain day on a weekend when I have no work or I'll ditch work for it? And then we, and then apparently there were like 30 people who came together to this park and we all just be- made friends. We all met online friends that we made in group chats and it's just like a really fun thing. But yeah, it's like, it's amazing how online online connections work. I think it's like the new pen pal in that case, now that you mention it. Like, I remember hearing stories about how parents would have like assignments to write someone who lives in like Mexico or someone far away and they just have to do it through letter writing. And I think that online friends or at least online communities and the people we talk to is like the online version of the pen pal. Except you get to talk to anyone. So how do you guys see online connections in the future? Do you think it's going to be like Sword Art Online where we wear VR headsets and go to the virtual world? Oh, wait, that's VR chat. Ready Player One. But seriously, how do you guys view future ways on how we connect with people online? The future online friends, the new pen pal, the pen pal 3.0, if you must call it. I don't know. I think that the future of online friends is only going to get better because you'll have this generation who was kind of raised on, you know, having friends online and then we'll start and like our generation will start to have children of their own who will go on the internet and who will make online friends and we'll be able to understand it more because we've been through the same things. And I know if I have a kid one day who has a friend overseas, I'm going to try my gosh darn hardest to help them meet them because I know how important it is to me to meet Josie. And so I want it to be just important, just as important to, for my future child at some point to meet their online friend. Well, the way I see uh, the future of online friends and everything is basically, 
like you were saying earlier, I would love to see it become a thing like Sword Art Online. And yeah, we have VR chat, but I mean, like, where you can actually, like, have really good backgrounds and, heck, even just fight with people and just, you know, have it be one giant interactive thing, especially, like, looks-wise. I don't know. I just, I would love to see the look of something like VR chat improve, which I think it will, and just have it look from what it is now to just something amazing, like just, you know, really stunning. As for me, I would like to think that the misconceptions of online connections and online friends would be slowly gone. People would be like slowly accepting it. It would be more acceptable in society and that there wouldn't be any more shame to making online friends ask, if you say to someone, hey, I have an online friend who I'm really close with, there are people who might judge you a bit for it. And maybe someday in the future as technology evolves and change over time, it's just going to be more acceptable to society that these things happen, that we are able to talk to people who may live either next door or in the next state or who lives in the other side of the planet it will be more acceptable and just and people will be like oh so that's your friend congratulations oh i would love to know you more i am the person you're talking to's parents it's just gonna be more widely accepted and we don't have to label anyone as online friend and real life friends anymore it's just gonna be friend they are our friends no online no offline we're just friends i don't care if we talk through a screen or anything and that is the end of the podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it. After this one, we're going to take a short break. But don't worry, we will be back with more episodes and more topics to delve into. So, my name is Ari, and with me is... TJ Matt. And along with us, we have Jackie Jess. You can follow him on YouTube, Twitter. Subscribe to him. He does really great Club Penguin videos and live streams. We have Britt. Follow her on her social medias. She has an Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And we also have Acacia, who has her own YouTube channel and her Twitter account. And I think she has Instagram as well, so follow her on those. If you want to listen more to this podcast, please subscribe to Podbean, Apple Podcasts, my YouTube channel, and soon Spotify. Links down below. So, this is the end of Casual Nerds, and see you guys next time. Alright, we'll see you guys in the next episode.